always want to fix my hair at the last minute when it's just going live. Hello. 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 Let's see. More centered. Hmm. And in the exact center. Hello. There you are. One of you. Me. <laughs> Welcome me. The day will come when with elation you will meet yourself at your own doorway. Derek Walcott, love after love, great poem. Hello, Kathy and Teresa, jumping right in. Amy and Donna, how you doing, people? So happy to see you here. Yay, 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 yay. We have the whole gang is here. It's kind of like remember, like the shows like Cheers and and Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> that show where everybody went into a bar and just hang they just hang out together and you knew everybody because everybody went to the same bar but there was no like concrete structure around it but there were always the same people I love seeing your names come up those of you who are new if you are there you are so welcome to the gathering room and those of you who are tried and true fellows of the gathering room I can see so many of you Ann and Kim and Denise and uh, Kathy and da, 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 all sorts of people, many, many people. You are all very welcome to the gathering room. And I am Martha Beck. That's for podcasting reasons. And we are here today to talk about staying inspired. Because I just finished doing a little course online. You guys may have, some of you may have been there. It was called Practical Wayfinding. And it's about sort of how to navigate the crazy world we're in. And a lot of people ask questions, hundreds of people ask questions, so I couldn't answer every question on the online. But there was a whole category about staying motivated, staying inspired, staying somehow vibrant in these times. I mean, look at this, it's the dead of winter. I remember the first time I got really depressed, I went into the guidance counselor at the Harvard University Health Services and I said, I want to kill myself and he said, Look outside, it's February. He says everybody wants to kill themselves in Boston in February. It wasn't a very productive session, but I do remember it every February. Um, so yeah, it's not the, the easiest time of year for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere to get inspired. For those of you who are in the Southern Hemisphere, it's hot as blazes and there's fire danger and I don't know what all. So it's rough, it's just generally rough. Then you throw in the things I talk about every week because they're still happening. The pandemic, the general um, breakdown of all human social structures. Yeah, I don't feel inspired, but I do because I know how to stay inspired because I have gone through many, many times of what many periods I would call the doldrums. At sea, the doldrums are when there's no wind and you're just uh, sitting there in the water. In life, the doldrums are when you don't really want to get out of bed. You don't want to brush your teeth. That would be a little more. That would be depression. The doldrums are just like, blah, it's day X 155 of the pandemic. I haven't been out of my house since last March. It's really hard to get motivated for yet another Zoom meeting or, you know, all my friends are struggling and I don't know how to handle that. Like, it's a tough time. So how do you keep yourself fired up to do things that make you happy? And one of the things I heard over and over from you guys, from people in the Practical Wayfinding course, from my coach trainees, is they say, people are telling me, get creative, stay creative. I myself, Martha Beck, have said to you very peoples here in the gathering room on multiple occasions that creativity is a great way to keep your fires stoked when you're in tough times. Easier said than done. How do you say inspire, stay inspired to keep creating things when there's really a lot of pressure that seems to go against that? So I was thinking about the people that I didn't get to answer in Practical Wayfinding and I thought, okay, how do I stay motivated? How do I stay inspired? Because the truth is I didn't used to, but now that I am a crone, I kind of do. Like, I feel, I feel bad just saying that sometimes because I know how much some of you are suffering. But believe me, I, I've, I've visited that neck of the woods. Maybe not exactly your place in the woods, but that neck of the woods, I've been there. I've been all the uninspired I could imagine being for years, decades on end. And yet, these days I somehow stay inspired. How do I do it? I was thinking about it today 
and I realized that it's a lot like keeping a fire going. I am sitting now next to a space heater in a, a freezing cold room because our furnace broke down and there's a blizzard coming. And that's why I put on the, on the promo today, I was like, as they say in the South, praise God and hope the creek don't rise, I'll be there. So if the blizzard doesn't bring all our electricity down, I'll be here, but I'm freezing. <laughs> And I've got blankets on and everything. But um, we have a fireplace in our house. So we just huddle around that fireplace. And we do it every day. And it's, so, it's actually a really cozy, wonderful thing. But the fire has to be constantly tended. And I remember I grew up without seeing fireplaces much. And so I was surprised to find that fire making and fire tending is a very highly prized skill all over the world because every traditional culture that ate cooked food or that needed to be warm found a way to make fire and then keep it going. And it's not easy. Some of you may have participated with me or with the wonderful master coach, Wayfinder master coach, Michael Trotta. Um, in, we used to do some seminars where Michael would teach people what's called primitive fire making, where you make fire with very basic things like a stick and a rope or in a rock or two sticks and a rope and another person various different ways to do it um, but it's way harder than you would think and to really do it right you have to master this equation this little equation called the triangle of fire and the triangle of fire is you need fuel to burn has to be suitable fuel we all know that wood peat whatever you need heat so it has to be up above a certain temperature and you need oxygen which a lot of people, that's the part I was like, oh, I didn't know that. And when you make primitive fire, what happens is you get, you, you use friction to create enough energy in the, in the wood and your fuel source so that it starts to get up to the point of combustion, which is sometimes called the fourth element. It's a chemical reaction that happens to the material when it reaches a certain temperature and it combusts and it starts to glow and smoke. And then you put it's a little dust pile of smoke and embers and you put it in something really flammable like dry grass and then you blow on it and it smokes and it smokes and it smokes and then you blow on it one more time and it just goes boom and you feel like prometheus you just the first time i actually saw this happen in front of my i was just like we can do anything it doesn't even matter if the entire world you know goes down in in some horrible catastrophe, we will rise again because we have the secret of fire. When you're out in the woods and you get it that way, it's amazing. It's very inspiring. Inspire means to breathe in. So perspire, respire, to respiration is breathing in and out. Inspiration te technically means breathing in. And expiration typically means, um, ex <laughs> what if I mean? specifically means breathing out. But we're talking about saying inspired. So how do you keep the in-breath going? How do you keep the oxygen coming? What are the equivalents of heat, fuel, and oxygen that keep me going all the time? And I realized that I have the triangle of fire going on in my life. And here's how it goes. And you, you can do it too. So heat in this equation is other people. It's very simple. And you don't have to have them there in the room. It's wonderful if you can. But most of my inspiration comes from people who have not been in the room when I got inspired. It came from me either reading things that they'd done or watching online or seeing them on TV or whatever it was. And there's something that happens when you see or read about someone doing something that you've never done before, but it, it, it's true for you. It like matches your vibration um, that your mind goes, oh, like there's a combustion thing. In the book, um, The Talent Code by Dan Coyle, who talks about um, the brain science of how to be really good at something, he talks about ignition happening in the brain when people see someone doing something that they would like to do. And he references, for example, Michelle Wee, who is this brilliant female gol golfer, and she's of Korean background. And she started dominating the world's go women's golf tournaments for, um, I don't remember in the 90s and the aughts, I don't remember, but she was amazing, probably still is. I don't follow golf that much. What I do know is that like five to 10 years after she became a big thing, 
all these amazing women golfers started coming out of Korea, South Korea, because they had seen Michelle Wee and it ignited their belief that they could do something like that. And they never had thought of it before. Same thing happened when Roger Bannister broke the four minute mile, wasn't supposed to be possible. He did it, everyone started doing it. Well, not everyone, but a lot of athletes started doing it because they heard it could be done. Um, you may watch one of my favorite shows, The Great British Baking Show. I don't know if you watched it this season. Mm. Spoiler alert, if you don't wanna know who won, mute me. Oh, oh, Rowan Meng and the Gracious Badger is editing me heavily. Okay, I'll just say this. Mm. When they started, it was a bunch of brilliant amateur bakers going, being very polite to each other and baking phenomenal things that I want to eat. But they were kind of all sort of going it alone. Now they've been running this show for several years and there are people who were children when they first watched it. And these people have been baking up a storm since they were like 10 and they're brilliant. Like the level of baking has probably gone up for everybody who watches the show, right? It ignited it. So for me, I ignite my desire to write by reading the writing of people whose writing I admire. I ignite my spirituality by reading the words of people like Nisargadatta Maharaj. I remember telling Deepak Chopra that I was reading him and Deepak said, yeah, that he will light you up. He will light you up to the same temperature just by giving you his words. And Hafiz, the, the Persian poet said, over the distance of a thousand years, I will lean the fire of my life into your life, uh, fire of my soul into your life and light your candle. So these people are deliberately giving us inspiration. They're giving us, they're raising the temperature of our ins inspiration until we hit this combustion point, foom. And then we, we have this sort of yearning to do what they did and to learn and to push ourselves. Okay, so that's the thing. Other people, you go out and you see who, who ignites you, what ignites you. I love to watch painting shows online too. And then I wanna paint and then I do. Okay, so find your inspiration online in books. Ignite yourself by just bathing in the best of the best of the people who've gone before you. Next thing, fuel. So that's your heat. Now you need fuel. Okay. In this case, fuel means self-care. You have to keep this animal, this body, your body, and your mind healthy by doing good things for it. And yes, self-care means things, it, it goes from the inner to the immediate to the widespread. So you start, for example, with a loving kindness meditation. The basic self-care that I do when I am so out of it, I can't, I don't know if I'll ever come back. I just start repeating those Tibetan loving kindness mantras to myself. May you be well, may you be happy. May you be free from all suffering. May you feel safe. May, may you have life abundantly. And just on and just over and over and over. So train the mind to give your other self care. When you've got that, when the insides are caring for you, then care for your body. Wrap up in a really soft blanket if it's cold. Take a bath. People, like baths can be I used to think that was just a cliche, but then I started realizing that for some people, baths are the equivalent to a baptism, like a bath can refresh and renew you. Um, you know, get delicious food, take time to rest, get a massage, rub your own feet, whatever, you know, pet the cat, whatever it takes to make your body feel at home and loved and embraced, that's fuel. And if you don't keep it coming, the fire goes out, no matter how inspired you may be by other people. The last thing is oxygen. The thing that I didn't know at first, the thing I didn't know you could literally blow. I was blowing into our fireplace today. I put in some paper, it started to smoke. I kept blowing and then boom, that big burst of flame. It's so satisfying. And oxygen is truth. Oxygen is our integrity. Oxygen is finding our way back to what feels right for us and feels real to us. So this is my whole book on integrity that's coming out. It's all about finding the thing that makes your heart, your body, your mind, and your soul feel aligned. Um, this week I tried to go to some meetings that I just, I wanted desperately to go to them, but I just didn't have time and I knew it was wrong for me. And what happened to me was not only did I lose all inspiration, 
But I got up one morning and my face was all like red and swollen and blotchy and my tongue started to swell up. So, I mean, it was not the time to do a Zoom meeting. It's like my body said, if you intend to do a Zoom meeting that you don't want to do, here's what you'll lose, your face and your tongue. <laughs> it was really gross, you guys. Anyway, it was because I wasn't being true to myself. And I was afraid I would upset some people who had invited me to the meeting. And I loved them so much. But I just had to call and say, excuse me, I can't go to the meeting. I have to do self-care and inflation. And I was back in my truth. And the moment they said, don't be silly, we love you anyway, everything started to, to flame brightly again. I felt inspired to make things, to connect with people, to love my family members, to exercise, to do everything. So those three things, you got to just keep them coming. Keep the temperature up by being inspired by others, people you know or people you don't know. Keep doing self-care, 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 because that is the fuel. And if it stops coming, you burn out. And then finally, you got to go to what is true for you, because if you lose what's true for you, the oxygen is gone and the fire stops. There's one other thing I didn't say under self-care, and that is that it is part of self-care to reach out to someone else and say, I need company. And I have a friend who did that recently. She feels really, really isolated because of COVID. And she just called me. She's a very dignified person, doesn't ask anyone for anything. And she said, I need to talk to you sometimes, like frequently. And I was like, hell yeah, let's do it. So that too is part of self-care, making sure you get the others that you have to have around you. So let's take some questions now, if we may. Um, I'm going to see if... Um, the gracious badger has popped up any questions if not i will just read oh i made someone laugh out loud that just made my day um let's see oh jessica says i know i'm pooped out when hearing loving kindness mantras makes me tear up i love that because as i often say people we don't cry when we lose our hope we don't cry when we're on a battlefield under stress we cry when we get home we cry when we know we're safe. And what happens to me, the last time this happened was about three years ago. I got really into a weird, dark place. And I couldn't find my way out. And then I started doing the loving kindness mantras after two or three days of being really out of it. And the first thing, the way I knew I was coming home was that I started to cry. And it was that healing, as they say in therapy circles, grief is the healing feeling. But it comes when you offer yourself care so those words those loving words if that's all you need that what a small price to pay for staying inspired right um and jessica also said that this community is inspiring for and you guys inspire me why do you think i'm here <laughs> i need you all yay um and tracy says i use instagram for that um only have people that inspire me. Yeah, take everybody off your Instagram, Twitter feed, Facebook that doesn't inspire you. There's so much that will take away your oxygen by moving you out of your truth. If you feel badgered or frightened by somebody who is angry on the internet where it's so easy to be angry, what will happen is that your mind will stray from your own truth because it wants to be part of the collective. It's a very strong force in the brain. And the second you're out of truth and into the collective mind, you've gone into consensus and out of your senses, as Ro and I like to say on our podcast. But the, the oxygen's gone. And when the oxygen's gone, it doesn't matter how many inspiring examples you have and it doesn't matter how many baths you take. If you are not in what's true for you, you won't stay inspired. So thank you for that. Um, Trudy says, how do you tell if it's self-care to rest? or being too slack when you should be uh, firing the body up a bit. Okay, the, the thing that I would say in general is that in our culture, we are taught to believe that if we're not exercising, we're being too slack. And I don't believe that. And, and the reaction most of us have to that is we torment ourselves to be too active and then we either get too tired or too intimidated by our own ambitions and we just give up. So it's very important to pay attention to the animal of the body. So if you don't know if your animal wants to move or not, it's pretty simple. Start moving and see how it feels. 
for me, if I start moving and I keep moving for, I have a stationary bicycle, thank God for the winters here. Um, if I go on the, the stationary bicycle for five minutes and after five minutes, I don't feel good. Like I really feel like I'm pushing. I'm way too tired to exercise. It's time to lie down. Generally, if I go five to seven minutes, my body starts to enjoy it. Deeply, I like, I put on music, I feel like I'm dancing and the movement feels delicious. Um, I know people who just dance around their houses a lot. I'm not that good a dancer, but if you start moving and you feel exhausted, time to rest. If you start moving and it feels delicious, keep moving until you get tired, then you rest. In one of my books, I said, this is the pattern. You play until you feel like resting, and then you rest until you feel like playing, and then you do that again for the rest of your life, and that is your life, and that will keep you inspired. So Elizabeth says, what if you feel the presence of so many inspiring fires within you and it's hard to navigate? What if you even trust that they can all lead you to your most true self? They're all golden paths, but also feel that there are so many needs, it's hard to attend to or know which golden path will meet the world's needs most fully. The world's needs most fully. Okay, so I think that's the thing. You've gone off track when you say, I need to, I need to meet the world's needs most fully, because you can't know the world's needs. You can only know your own path and your own, what brings you joy. Over the many years that I have lived, I have realized that the things I did to be virtuous to the world did not work. <laughs> it flat out didn't work. When I was trying really hard to help a client, it never worked. What did work was when I followed the path of my own fascination, my own joy. Inspiration and fascination go together. And you may remember fascination is attention without effort. So anything that gets your attention and holds it without effort is probably the best golden path to take at the moment. There may be dozens, that they are infinite. The golden paths, to the, there are a thousand million paths up the mountain to the same pinnacle. But which one you take right now? Follow what brings you joy. Now, I have ADD. What did I do? I went to get dinner in the kitchen yesterday I went to get a dinner I saw something on a computer I sat down and started working on the computer while my whole family was there ready to eat dinner and I'd forgotten that dinner existed and now you know the nightmare that is my inner world um, now there are tons of paths and sometimes your attention gets grabbed by one and then grabbed by another and then grabbed by a third one if you've got that little bugbear in you that's saying, but I must meet the world's needs, you're off your truth. The truth never comes to anyone as, go out and sacrifice yourself for the unknown people. It comes as teams of wild horses are dragging you to do what you're doing now. Like when I go to, I remember one time I was in a movie theater and someone like had, a heart attack or something a few rows ahead of me and they turned there was a commotion and his wife like screamed and they turned on the lights and I jumped over I started jumping over rows of movie theater seats to get there going I know CPR because I am a colossal narcissist no because nothing in the world was gonna stop me from doing everything I could to help it makes me happy it wasn't a choice it was we were talking today about heroism and how it actually takes you away from you like it's not the realization of your self's needs it's the loss of self to the joy of the of action and yes it may help the world but you're not thinking about that you're not thinking really at all it's almost like a meditative state in high action that's what inspiration feels like and uh Chicksent Mihai, Mihai Chicksent Mihai called it flow, and it's the place where the brain secretes the most dopamine, and we just become completely unconscious of ourselves. So stop worrying about the world quite as much, and just follow fascination and watch. Whatever you do will be useful to the world, more useful than anything you did out of out of virtue. Okay, Heather says, Martha, if we don't have a diverse group of people, even angry people. Are we cutting ourselves off from inspiring others? Oh, I don't think 
anyone is ever cut off from inspiring others if the force wants to use us to inspire them. Uh, I've had the strangest experiences of spiritual teachers or helping people or wisdom coming to me over all kinds of obstacles when I was completely in isolation. Um, I've had people come I, once, I may have told you this before, I was at an art exhibit and it was, the, you know, they, they put pictures on the walls, but then they put up all these walls inside the room to hang more pictures on. And a woman came around, I was at the very back, and she came around the side of this partition and she goes, there you are, who are you, what do you do? And I was like, I don't know the answer to either one of those questions, but I'm glad to see you. And she said, I just felt an energy trail and I followed it here. And, you know, we had a great conversation. I hope she was inspired. I was inspired. But that little incident really showed me that we're being, and I'm getting woo, woo here, but it's my reality. We're being taken to the places and to the people who will inspire us and to the people we will inspire. So follow the fascination. If you want to be with a group of angry people because you care about them, you're fascinated by them. I've, I've done that. I've studied as a sociologist very angry people and they were fascinating until I was done studying them and then I wanted to get away. <laughs> that was a long time ago. But yeah, they'll fascinate you if it's right. So just follow fascination, follow fascination and you'll be with the right people. Laura Amy says, how do you embrace your wildness and remain part of a community? How do you maintain your truth in times of such isolation? Those are two questions that are kind of perpendicular to each other. One says, um, being wild um, requires a community and maintaining your truth is hard in times of isolation. I would actually say maintaining your truth in isolation is easier. Maintaining your truth and your wildness with other people is harder. So if you feel isolated, you definitely need more self-care and maybe connecting with more people so that instead of isolation, it just feels like solitude. And in solitude, if you can sit patiently and get through the, the mind storms in your head that come up when you're silent, you will find your truth emerging. And it, we've talked about this a million times. We'll talk about it another million times about in stillness, silence, and, and solitude the truth rises from inside us and it tells us what we're really thinking, what we're, well, more what we're really feeling, what we've known all along, we haven't been letting ourselves know. And in the final analysis, it, it allows us to think according to our truth, which is the hardest thing. Feeling and knowing are easy. They come from the heart and the soul. But thinking, which is from the mind, is a bit difficult to master. The mind is a wonderful servant, but a terrible master. So yeah, be by yourself, take advantage of this. I just read a quote by Sister Joan Chittister, a Benedictine monk, uh, nun. And this was many years ago, she said that America would be a place of so much more quiet and peace if, if all Americans were forced to live by the rules of a cloistered order. And I was like, hmm, now that you mention it, Sister Joan, we're all kind of doing that. So take advantage of that. And then get wild by being that and then find the people who are fascinating to your wild self. And you will find yourself drawn to people who are in the same neck of the woods you are, right? Who are, how did we all come together? I just started broadcasting these things and you guys show up. I don't know how it works, but I do know that if you're not interested, you'll tune out. And if I'm not interested, I'll tune out. So I'm my wildest self right now. And I'm surrounded by you guys, emotionally, spiritually, and through the computer. And we're all being wild together because wildness and isolation don't have to be one and the same thing. Okay, so last question, Laurie says, is feeling guilty a sign that you're out of integrity? No, feeling guilty is a sign that you think you're out of integrity, but you may be doing things that make you feel guilty because you've been culturally trained to think they're bad. They may not be bad at all. So for example, <laughs> the first time I ever tasted an alcoholic beverage, I was 30, yeah. And I was on an airplane and I had just officially left the Mormon church after years of not really getting along with it. 
and I had a sip of champagne that they just brought me and I just waited for my whole body to explode in flames and the plane to crash and I felt so guilty because I'd been trained from babyhood alcohol is a sin and it's not great for some people but it's I don't think it's a sin because I didn't burst into flames and I looked around at all the other people drinking champagne and I thought they can't all be evil. And I sort of started moving into a frame of mind where I was allowing things, I was allowing my experiences to guide me toward the truth rather than my socialization. So guilt is a sign of socialization. If you are not, if you feel guilty about something and you know from your truth that you're violating your own morals, then you need to rethink the situation. Otherwise, rethink your socialization and instead get to your wildness use this cloistered solitude find the people that fire you up get inspired keep taking great care of yourself and having others help take care of you and then breathe the oxygen of truth into your life and that flame will keep burning and burning and burning and burning until you go off to another kind of life so thank you for coming to the gathering room you inspire me so much all the time and i will see you guys next week Love you!